joining us either on YouTube or Bethel TV. Cannot wait to see what God has for us today. But before we start, it's a very big week in the U.S. and and in other places. What is this week? It is Thanksgiving week. Ooh, Thanksgiving week. Let's go. Listen, I went to Costco last night (laughs) and I stood in line for 20 minutes for rotisserie chicken. (laughs) It's also our Costco's moving. (laughs) Tell me that's America for Thanksgiving week. It is. So we just want to know in the chat, if you're in America, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, if you're not from America, what are you thankful for? Because it's just a perfect season of thankfulness, gathering, and eating. and Lots of good food. Lots of good food. We and love so we want to know, what are you thankful for if you're not from America? But if you're from America, just put in your favorite Thanksgiving dish. Rory, what's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Ooh, I think my favorite Thanksgiving dish is, is a collection of items. Ooh. It's usually like if I get that bite of like potatoes, turkey, uh, stuffing with, with cranberry gravy? sauce. Oh, no, no gravy. Cra- I can do gravy too, but cranberry sauce. If it's homemade, oh my gosh, I put cranberry sauce on everything <laughs> if it's homemade. I am that guy. I, I have to admit, I am not a cranberry guy. <laughs> I I would I would skip over the cranberry sauce just a lot to of do extra do. gravy. Uh, like see. my Thanksgiving plate is just a lot of beige. Come on. And brown. That's really funny. I love that. Obviously, a lot of people are like, they don't do Thanksgiving or not thankful for stuff. Okay, we got stuff. Caroline, though, stuffing. Hey, come on, Caroline. Caroline, we see you. Stuffing. We love stuffing. We Stuffing is good. Mine, I like that. Mine has to be baked mac and cheese. Oh, that is good. Baked mac and Jordan cheese. Jordan also makes a very mean and baked mac and cheese. I make the best mac and cheese. It's true. At least I think in, so here too. in Redding, California. I but. think so, too. If you come here, you should uh, ask him to make you mac and come cheese. Come and find me. I'll, I'll make you mac and cheese. Pie with a dollop of cream. Come Ooh. on, Mike. Let's go. Homemade cranberry sauce and sweet potatoes. See, Amy. Amy knows. Is. She knows. Amy knows. She knows what's up. Anyways, y'all, we got a really, really full packed jam amazing it's morning be so fun. um we're really excited we're gonna have worship but also we have communion it's communion sunday and i want to encourage you guys um before we even worship starts go and get some elements set aside we'd love for you to take communion with us as we do it at the close of our um our worship set such a powerful time um i love doing it as a corporate family and then we have a very special speaker so special very special i'm so excited man i love this woman um, she is one of our overseers for our Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry online, and her name is Libby Gordon, and she is about to wreck our lives. Get your uh, pens, get your paper, so or good. just get a pillow and a blanket. Or just get a pillow and a blanket. Just ready to be laid out Or Susanna, eat those twice-baked potatoes, because I love twice-baked potatoes, too. Come on. Yum. I like this. Just also, Jessica, and Jessica mac and cheese is for sure a Thanksgiving food. If oh, you do 100%. it right. If you do it right. Oh, Jessica. We're not talking about craft Come mac and to cheese. Northern Reading Thanksgiving. We will help you we will out. Help we'll you. welcome you into mac the and fold. Cheese, mac always. and cheese. Anyways, I want to just um, release something, though, that feels really significant right now over um, you guys that are watching on YouTube and Bethel TV. Is, um, man, this week I, I've been, I've had two radical encounters with Jesus this week that have been so marking. And they've been coming out of a season where a lot of people have been prophesying that there would be long standing encounters that God would take us into. And I have been hearing it from multiple people. And, and then I've been in like this, this encounter that's been happening all week. And I wanna release long standing encounters right now yes. that last more than just a moment yes. or even an hour. But even this morning that some of you guys would actually get taken into three, four, five hours of encounter or a few days yes. of encounter where the Lord is speaking to you, ministering to you and, and actually releasing destiny and purpose over you in a new way. And so right now, God, we just release yes. what's happening over our house. God, we release the testimony, God, of long-standing encounters right now that you would just touch. You would touch every single person yes. that's watching live, that watches this back, that there would be such a release of your presence. Yes. We just pray for more of your spirit to fall, more yes. of your Holy Spirit to fall. In Jesus', In Jesus name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on. Get a joy. Amen. More, more, more. Yes. Amen. Well, guys, we'll see you on the guys, other side of this amazing so service. We're so excited for service. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And bye. Beautiful, everybody. Well, welcome. 
Glad you're with us in the house of the Lord. If you're online and joining us, thank you for joining us this morning. Online community, we are having communion at the end of worship time. So if you want to kind of grab some elements or you know, some, something to take communion with us, you might want to do that. All right, shh, that's enough love and affection. Beautiful. Hey, happy Thanksgiving week. It's a tremendous, I love that our nation just sets aside a, a particular holiday just to be grateful. And when we're grateful, it kind of says we're indebted. Like we realize that all this good stuff didn't come from us. It comes from someone else, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a blessing to us. And uh, if, if America's not your, uh, you know, first country, uh, your home country, Thanksgiving is just one of our most wonderful celebrations. It, it's interesting, it came out and it started right in the, at, in the middle of the Civil War, like right in the middle. Of course, we got the pilgrims a little earlier, but the proclamation from President uh, Abraham Lincoln came right after the Battle of Gettysburg and he called the nation to prayer and thankfulness in a time of crisis and division. It's not a civil war, but we got a little bit of crisis and division going on. So this is a, a great time for us to just be thankful, to fill our hearts with thanksgiving for the Lord, for salvation. And uh, he has put us in a family. He has coached us up in how to treat people, how to love one another. And uh, it grieves me a little bit. I don't know about you, but some folks talk about how difficult it is to be with family at Thanksgiving time. And if that's been your situation, then I pray the Lord to bring peace and shalom to your home but as a man who's been raised in the church by a father and mother raised in the church, I am deeply grateful for the love and camaraderie I share with my, with my family. Yeah. That we get together and it's not a burden. We're not trying to figure out how to not fight. <laughs> We're not trying to avoid with football, but actually really being able to enjoy each other, enjoy each other's company as well. And so again, the, um, the ability to live in respect and kindness and gratefulness for one another is, is a very mature thing that the Lord has, has equipped us with and clothed us with. It's part of your inheritance as a believer of Jesus Christ. I pray that your Thanksgiving would be you know, thoughtful, intentional, and if, you're, if you're, uh, you don't have a, a group to be with yet, that the Lord would put you in a group this Thursday to have some place to celebrate his goodness online as well, that you'd have some place to celebrate his goodness with other people. Let's turn our hearts in thanksgiving right now before worship. Every good gift comes from you. That's in the Bible, everybody. Every single good gift comes from you. And we find ourselves grateful. We got a spouse next to us, potentially. We're grateful for her or for him. We got kids that we put in some room somewhere. We're grateful for them. Uh, maybe they're sitting with us. We got a whole lot of things to be thankful for. The peace in our country, the shalom, but we do pray that you would continue to spur, spur America, spur our nations, our homelands to thankfulness, that we lift our eyes to you and say, we are grateful. We see your hand, we see your great power, and we are grateful. And so let's enter the courts of praise with thanksgiving this morning. You're invited to worship down front, if you would, and we just, we bless this worship team. We bless you guys. Take us someplace in the Lord.
have to end on the one, sorry. generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb and all who've gone before us all who will believe sing the song of ages to the Lamb cause your name cause your name is the highest your name
song today. Lift your hands. The Bible says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Come on, just lift your voices. Sing to him. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name forever.
was my dead on that cross, and I'm thankful for mercy new every morning. The perfect son of God In all his innocence You're walking in the dark with you and me He knows what living is He's acquainted with our grief Man of sorrow, son of suffering
love reach the depths of the moon. Let your truth reach the depths of the moon. Let there be healing of a heart today, Jesus. Lost come from round wherever you There's a song in every broken soul And only you can sing it You reach to the depths of the broken heart Speak life to the broken soul Before worship started, Jen told me she saw a picture of someone who's online 
and you're not, you're not actually in the room, you're just kind of walking by, we want to invite you into the room. And you're, you're, you're not actually kind of paying attention to what's going on, but God's wooing your heart. I want to invite you into the room. And I want to declare John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him won't perish, won't die, but will have eternal life. And whether you're in this room, you're in our overflow or you're online, if you don't know Jesus, there is only one right gift we can give to the God who gave everything and gave his own life. The only gift we can give is our life back. It's called full surrender. It's called making him king and Lord of our life. And if you haven't made the Lord, Lord of your life, if you haven't given your full life to Jesus Christ, today is your day of salvation. If you've ran away from God, if you have ignored his lordship, maybe you know him, maybe you even asked him in your heart at once, but he is not Lord of your life. Today, in his loving kindness, in his generosity of heart, he is chasing you down. Will you give your life in full surrender to him? If that's you and you're in this room and you're like, I, I need to make him Lord of my life. I've never done that or I need to redo that. Maybe I gave him part and I need to give him a full surrender if you're in the overflow or you're in this room, you're online. I want you to raise your hand and say, yeah, that's me. I need Jesus Christ. I need his lordship. I surrender my life to him. I'm just gonna give a moment. I see a hand over here. Anyone else? If you're online, I want you to, yeah, you can give it up. This is what it's about. If you're online, I want you to put in the chat, I want you to put, I surrender my life to God. I surrender because we want to partner with you. I'm just going to take a moment more. Anyone else? Just raise your hand nice and high so I can see you. Right here. Come on. That's awesome. That it is a courageous act to give our life in full surrender to God. And he sees that. And what was impossible yesterday, God makes possible today. And he makes a way where there was no way. And we release a new breakthrough. The breakthrough that comes from full surrender. I want us all to pray this together. Jesus Christ, today, I make you Lord of my life. I fully surrender to you. Lord, forgive me. Wash me clean. I believe in what Jesus Christ did. What he did on the cross to purchase a new life. And I receive new life today. I receive a new identity as a son and daughter of God. In Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, say it. Now, Holy Spirit, fill me up. Baptize me with your power and your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you give God praise? And we get the opportunity 
to take communion this morning. I know, these guys thought it was done. No, but that's just salvation, getting you ready for communion. And if you, if you need the communion elements, will you just raise your hand? And our team is coming to get those. If you're at home, grab a piece of bread, grab some juice or even water. We're going to partake of communion this morning. I just wanted to make sure that we're all right before God before we receive communion. And now we are. And for those of you that ask the Lord into your heart, at the end of service, we're going to have a team right over here. We'd love for you to visit with them and pray with them. They'd love to pray with you. Just keep your hand up if you need elements. Anyone else? Looks like we've got just about everyone. There's someone in the back here still waiting for the elements right up front. This morning we're going to do something a little unique in that many times when we celebrate communion, we do it for ourselves or potentially our family. And uh, that's what my wife and I do on a regular basis is we, we receive the, the bread, the body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus for, for us as individuals and for our family. But I wanna do it today, not just for us, not just for wholeness and healing in our body, not just for forgiveness of sins and the empowerment of Christ for our, ourselves and our family, but I wanna do it for the body of Christ. We, we're the body of Christ. I want to do it for the whole church, not, not just me. Because how many of you know sometimes we need healing in the church? We have wounds in the church that Jesus Christ himself bore stripes in his body for healing in the church across the globe. And I want to do that. Now that we have elements, why don't you stand to your feet? I want you to take the bread and, and break it. And right where you're at, I want you to pray and I want you to declare healing and wholeness over the church, over the body of Christ. Just lift up your voices. Jesus, we thank you for the wounds you took in your body for your church. Your, your body for the body. And God, where there's wounds, would you bring healing? Where there's broken relationship, where you release forgiveness, God, would there be forgiveness? and we release forgiveness for all those places where there's betrayal in the church. God, you were betrayed, and in the night you were betrayed, you took this, you paid for that. You paid for your church to be spotless and whole. And today we receive your body, and we receive it for the church all over the world. In Jesus' name, let's receive. Go ahead and take the, the juice, the blood.
Jesus' sacrifice releases forgiveness and his blood actually received today releases us into perfect identity as sons and daughters. God's desire is that none would be lost, that all would be saved, that all would come into the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And God, today we declare that the house of of God would be filled, that the house of God would be forgiven. Scripture declares, if my people will humble themselves and pray and turn from their ways, repent, God, you'll heal them, you'll heal their land. And God, we ask for a spirit of repentance to fall on the church, on the body. And Lord, you would forgive us and cleanse us, make us whole and righteous before you. As for us and our house, the body of Christ, we will serve the Lord all the days of our life. And we will serve the Lord with purity and power. Release purity and power back into the church, Lord. Purity and power in your body. Your beautiful bride. In Jesus' name, let's take the juice. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Amen. It is a good morning, and God is doing incredible things in this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you give it up for the worship team? And we love them, love them, love them. And why don't you welcome Jamila? She's awesome. I love you, Ben. Good morning. I get the awesome privilege of welcoming those who are with us for the very first time in a Bethel service. If that's you, will you wave at me? Yes, look at you emphatically back there. I love it. Hello, hello. Welcome. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. Um, We are so excited that you are here. We have ushers coming, so keep your hands raised because we would like to be able to stay in touch with you. Also, after service, we have a team um, who is ready to blast you and bless you in our south lobby. So please uh, make your way there so that we can bless you on your way out. Um, And then I have another privilege We are hosting um, Thanksgiving dinner on Thanksgiving Day as a church. Our outreach department does this every year, and we serve about 700 people with your generosity. Yeah, that's a big deal. I've never been to a church that serves 700 people at one sitting. But, okay, we need your help. We specifically need 30 pounds of sugar... Yeah, yeah, right. A lot of sweet potato pie. 20 bags of dinner rolls. Oh, no, that's the wrong list. Oops, sorry. We need 30 pounds of butter, even better. We need 15 hams, 500 pies of any variety. We need 200 pounds of potatoes and 40 pounds of sweet potatoes. A lot of sweet potato pie. So, If you are able to help us and you can make that happen by 6 p.m. today, we have a booth set up out in the Hebrews lobby with information about all those needs I just read off. And we're asking you to uh, go pick that list up, go to the store, come back by 6 p.m. with the items that the Lord puts on your heart to get for us, okay? If you can't do the shopping, then maybe you can help us with volunteering the day before or the day of. And you can also find out about volunteering at the booth. Kelamar is there and our outreach department will get you all set up. Okay? Awesome. Now, church news.
Hi Bethel family, we've got some updates for you. So here's this week's church news. If you missed last week, we had an incredible opportunity to hear more about the Rise and Build campaign and bring our gifts and commitments. I'm really personally excited about this because we'll be able to worship as one together in one building. What a concept. If you miss Commitment Sunday, you can still participate. Go grab a card at the info desk or complete an online form at Bethel.com build. Every third Sunday, we create a space in the great room at the 6 p.m. service for neurodiverse or special needs individuals who may find the sanctuary overstimulating. There is volume modification, stations to worship with dance, flags, and art, and a supportive community. All ages are welcome, but we do ask that children are supervised by a parent or caregiver. We are hiring, and we have some incredible positions available at Bethel on various teams, including facilities for those mechanically inclined, and early years for our zero to five year olds. Apply today at Bethel.com slash careers and join a team that honors, serves, and excels. It has been beautiful to see our Bethel family sign up to participate in the holiday volunteer opportunities that we've been sharing about. There is still need and still time to get connected. To do so, hop on Bethel.com forward slash holidays. And that's it for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com forward slash church news to learn more. Have the most incredible week and happy Thanksgiving. Come on, well, it's offering time. If you wanna stand to your feet, if you're joining us online, I welcome you to stand as well, unless you're driving. Don't do that if you're driving. We're gonna do offering reading number one. And I just wanna remind us and encourage us, let's not just do this because we do this every Sunday. Like Mark uh, 7, 13 says, the word of God is made of no effect by the traditions handed down from your forefathers. And you do a lot of stuff like this. And so let's make sure we attach faith as we read this, right? The whole purpose of this, reading this out loud, is to impart faith to us. Yeah. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Yeah. So if we wanna believe something different, we have to hear something different. So today, we're just gonna declare with a little extra oomph with that reality of I'm not just saying words on a screen, I'm, I'm actually releasing faith into the atmosphere over my world, over my environment, over my finances. Amen? So offering reading number one, as we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give in the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, if you're online, you can do that QR code or the link there. You can do that in the room as well. If you need an envelope, uh, just raise your hand. Uh, they'll get you the little cards as they pass out the bags. And then I have the amazing privilege of introducing this morning's speaker. And so um, if you don't know Libby Gordon, she, um, she, uh, she and her husband Richard um, help oversee the BSM Online School with my wife and I. And um, this woman is one of the best leaders I know. She walks in profound authority in Christ because she is submitted in authority to Christ. She sees the most amazing miracles that go forth and it is impossible to be in a room with this woman and not be transformed. So will you please help welcome the wonderful Libby Gordon as she comes up to share. I love you guys. I love that I get to be part of this service every week, both as a mom with little leads while on maternity leave at the back, um, chasing them, and then from other angles as well. Um, now in a new season where uh, I can, it is possible to sit through a whole service and be with my kids at the same time. 
Um, you are safe in the service. I'm going to make jokes and just have a little bit of cheekiness. I was raised by a lawyer and um, a school teacher. And as you can hear by my accent, I was raised in South Africa as well. And so um, you might have, be laughing a little bit, perhaps, if we have a similar sense of humour. And at the same time, um, the sword of the truth of the Lord will come and follow up. Um, so just a pre-warning so we can be friends. Um, I, uh, I know, obviously, and love most of you. Uh, no, I know most of you, and I love you all. <laughs> I love you because Christ loves you. But that's the truth. <laughs> There's the truth. Our online community is so precious to me. Um, each of you who are joining us, both our online students and our online community, I get the joy of being with you so, so often. Um, and so you, you know I love you. Yeah. You know I love you. Um, and uh, as I was um, getting ready uh, for uh, sharing this message, Bill, Chris, Dan, speak four services consecutively and a lot of the time attend our um, beautiful evening service at 6 p.m. in amongst doing more Ephesians 3.20 than you could ask or imagine. Um, and they don't talk about preaching four services in a row. Um, I started talking when I was eight months old and, and had some sentences, small two or three word sentences strung together. Um, when I was about 10 months old, I was a high school English teacher. I'm okay with talking for my husband's sins. I like to talk. No, Jesus died for Rich's sins um, and, and my sins too. And he loves me. I know he loves me. He's here and he's the best. Um, but truly, the thing that I think got me the most nervous for this time was that I would preach the same message four times in a row. And I feel, you know, I'm young, I'm, you know, nearly I'm 33, I'm nearly 34, I got young kids, I have energy, and uh, the fear of God gripped my life. <laughs> Can I preach four services in a row? So they don't talk about it because that's what they do every day. I don't, so I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> This is our third time diving into this Word, <laughs> which is gonna be so precious. Um, in fact, I was so nervous getting ready for this message. Um, I was on vacation with um, my husband and my two gorgeous kids. You can put a photograph of them up um, for us so you can see their faces. And as you, there you go, as you do. Um, I wanted to introduce myself so you knew who I was. Um, but uh, so I can stand in my own right. But the biblical beast you see with the dreadlocks is my husband. I am the wife of Richard Gordon. So I'm very proud about that. Um, I tease him and say, you, uh, if you've encountered the Holy Spirit or had your children have an encounter with um, the Lord in a radical way through Richie's ministry, you can raise your hands. I did it at Twinview and it was like, okay, oh, you're doing it now. I didn't say you should, but I love. Okay, we're gonna have a fun morning. We are participating, um, not commentating. Um, and, uh, and much like this, auditorium that is full and many of you will be online. They all um, raise their hands. And so I, I shared a few testimonies and things with them. So I just teased them and said, I'm just establishing myself in my own right, but I'm very, very proud to be the husband of this, uh, the wife of this amazing husband. <laughs> I'm very clear that I am a woman and I am a wife. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Would you ever imagine that you would applaud that and be proud of someone for saying that? But here we are. Okay, I have two children to increase the controversy and uniqueness of me and my generation. I have children. I have two children, um, my Moses and my Ella Rose. He's three and she is one. And I'm absolutely obsessed with being a mother. I love them with my whole heart. Before I had them, I had such an intention um, in my heart that if the Lord says children are a blessing from the Lord, what is a blessing for one, what God does for one, His heart is to do for all. Yeah. And so I know I don't just talk about my kids or um, 
uh, think they're a blessing to me, but like most mothers, I believe they are a blessing to the world. <laughs> and so you will definitely see them when I minister or I lead and if I'm part of things. And I learned, um, you know, in the, maybe my uh, postpartum season that perfection does not equal peace. That peace <laughs> comes from the person of Jesus. And so my life is very, not perfect at the moment um, because I am, uh, we are parents of toddlers, but I have radical peace and I have access that and uh, I might have stains on my shoes or different things. And I am so, so incredibly proud of that. I don't know if you are a parent and you've ever reached into your pocket and found one of your child's pacifiers or like a, a rock or something. My son is obsessed with rocks at the moment, surprise. <laughs> Um, and uh, he will grab a rock and he learned from Daniel Tiger, God bless Daniel Tiger. Um, this is not sponsored or I am not endorsing it. I don't know everything in Daniel Tiger. We're streaming. And so um, he had learned this song that making something special says I love you and um, uh, or bringing something special. And so he goes outside and brings me a rock and tells me it's a rock to say I love you. And so um, I am that parent who has rocks <laughs> in my office and in my car and when I see them, I'm filled with joy. Um, and I was so nervous literally for this message, maybe not so much to speak, but probably to speak because I do have the fear of the Lord and I am human, but also to speak four times. And so we had just been on vacation and um, it had been a long time coming and um, Chris had asked me to speak. Thank you, Dan and Chris for trusting me. Um, and as I was feeling out, like, when am I gonna prepare and how am I gonna set this up? What is on the heart of the Lord, both before I get up and, and, and during that time, I really felt um, deeply that I needed to make sure I actually unplugged and had a vacation, that it was serving me, serving people and definitely my family and most of all the Lord for me to do that. Yes. Rest is godly, amen. Yeah. Yes, except if you're lazy, then you can, your <laughs> faith must turn into act. Um, and I'm just teasing. See, I told you I would joke. Everyone breathe in and breathe out. You're safe. Um, and, uh, and then I felt, nope, I, I actually needed to rest. And then when I came home, the weather was completely different. It was raining, drizzling, all the things we had prayed for during summer. But while we were on vacation, um, we got to minister in an incredible ministry school in Hawaii and speak at a church there. And then we thought, Maybe the offering readings have come to pass and this is the favour of the Lord and this will, in fact, we are extending it and it was our vacation. And so we had a beautiful time um, in Hawaii. That's why we look so nice in that photograph. And, um, and then uh, as I got home, I woke up in the morning, was getting my kids dressed and I realised they have no winter clothes and their boots from last season do not fit them because they are growing, thank you God, at the speed of light. And uh, we had birthdays and a whole bunch of things going on. And so their rooms were a mess. And so I'm trying to prepare, but they can't even find their toys or the things to play with. And so I, how many of you have ever spiritualized your dysfunction? This is a safe place. If you're at home, you're alone, be bold. Own up, self-awareness, thank you God. And literally I have done that so many times in my life. Um, but truly, um, I can remember um, being, uh, you know, growing up a little bit unsure whether marriage was safe. Uh, I only became a Christian when I was 13 or 14 years old. And so I had the godly idea when I was first saved that I would never be married and I would solely serve the Lord and I would be a missionary in a specific um, place and, um, and had really set my heart on that until the Lord in His kindness came to me. This is for me specifically. It's a holy and righteous thing to be set apart for the Lord. Yeah. And so if that is for you, that is worthy of every ounce of honour and esteem. Absolutely. For Libby, I was spiritualising my dysfunction. I had a fear of marriage, so I thought I'd be set apart and <laughs> married just to Jesus because He was perfect. Um, and He is perfect. And I... Um, and I didn't wanna be married, but truly the Lord came to me and just reminded me that I was part of His kingdom and not mine. And that we weren't just going to spiritualize that dysfunction, we were gonna heal it. 
You're going to go there and God is going to speak into it and restore. Um, I'm so glad He did that so I can have Richie and my babes in my life. And there are other moments where I don't know if you've ever done this, but we spiritualize our our procrastination that actually we're about to do something God's called us to, whether it's a message or lead something in business, or um, perhaps you are a teacher and you feel the call of God on your life to be able to um, create specific lesson plans and you know it's God, but there's such a weighty call of God. You can feel the hand of the Lord that Steve Backlund says, you sabotage yourself down to your lowest level of belief about yourself. And often we sometimes feel like, well, I can't, you know, I don't know if you had this, I can't prepare in this, you know, situation. Cleanliness is godliness. And so let me just make sure I clean my office and reset it before I do this work. Have any of you ever done that before? Mm -hmm. I manifested that this week. Not last week, like three days ago. Uh, We got back from vacation and then I, I remember feeling this prompt in my spirit that how dare I prepare to teach and preach in the house of the Lord without keeping my own house and my own children taken care of and in order. This is absolute, um, this is, this is terrible. How dare I do that? And so I proceeded to obey the Lord with such obedience and radical response that I took all the clothes out of my kids' room decided to lay it out so I could see what they needed and what they didn't. I went online, I bought them new winter boots, I saw some secondhand clothes because sometimes we need to do that, amen, from some of my friends. And then I took out every activity and every toy out of their cupboard, donation pile, give to a friend, toy, I even did a toy rotation. Some in the garage, some out for the kids. And By the afternoon, I gave my husband a a trauma response because he's an A-type personality and my whole living room and dining room were covered with my organisation. And I felt so godly. You know, this is the call of God on my life. My priority, I love my children more than, and my husband more than um, I love what I do or anything else. So this is of the Lord. And then Richie said in the afternoon, "Um, babe, I think something's wrong. (laughs) And I responded, how could you say something is wrong? Do you not know I am a mother of this house? And if I do not have authority in my own house, how can I have authority in the house of the Lord and the church? And I was very offended. How many know when your emotions are high and you're very defensive, you're in the middle of talking and hey, I was raised by a lawyer, I can't communicate. And I am sharing and then midway through sharing this and speaking it out, I realized, oh yeah, he's right. And I'm actually super wrong. Um, And uh, that was me um, probably more definitely sabotaging just a moment of the Lord's. Sometimes we do that, a moment of favor. It can actually be more fearful to many of us than a moment of failure. And I'm thankful for a husband who calls me higher and knows uh, and can discern because it did have the, the picture of godliness but the root was a fear. (laughs) And and I'm just teasing, I'm being intense. Um, And and then literally um, my husband, (laughs) like I was a child, packed, took my work backpack and packed a lunch for me, put my laptop in and my charges and my notebook. And he literally walked me out of the door and he said, if you stay in this house, you will find another reason or call of God to do something else. (laughs) You need to go out of this place. And you need to um, go and prepare. He put me in Ryan Collins' office. He's the overseer of Bethel College because it is so stark and empty. We need an impartation. There was no distraction. There was no distraction. And so I'm not just gonna follow the Holy Spirit because I did not prepare and I'm doing it right now, but I have prepared. And we have a word from the Lord. And I, if I would entitle this message, I would call it, I love leadership. And you are silent because you are triggered or you have heard so many messages about leadership, both out of the church and within the church. We are in a generation or an age where there's this absolute obsession with leadership. And it comes like most extreme emotions uh, in two polar opposites. Either we are 
have celebrity culture where we are, are obsessed with heroes. What worship music are you listening to to get this breakthrough? Or which is necessary and good. I'm gonna go extreme to prove a point. I won't explain everything, but if you need clarity, you can come to me afterwards and I will open the Bible for you. Um, and I will open the Bible now too, I promise. And, uh, or which um, I can tell, you know, how set apart are you or how devoted you are based on what camp you might be in terms of who you listen to or how long your service is, or uh, I don't know, what your level of physical manifestation is, you know, charismatics, you know how we roll. Um, and, uh, and, 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 but we can have heroism in the church, which is actually devoid of honour. It's a distorted view of honour, where we assign something that should be assigned to God, to man. And then we hold them accountable to it as if they are God. And so as I've journeyed, oh, I'm offended because this person isn't perfect or they didn't come through, you know, like a father would or da, da, da. I have, you know, journey, I have wounds and gapes that the Lord has restored and healed and is in a process too of doing that. And so I... I can take those wounds and needs and something I should have assigned to God, I assigned to a person. And so because I see your humanity, I no longer have honour for you and I drop it so quickly and I run away. And I'm not advocating abuse or abuse of power or blind authority. We intelligent, godly, discerning people. Amen. Okay. Um, But what I can do is I can allow the celebrity cultural heroism, which parades itself as honour, but actually is sin because I am, it is, I am assigning what I should assign to the Lord. I am assigning to man. And here's that catch that I mentioned. I am holding them to the standard of God and that accountability. Now, if I do that, I could do it with my husband and I have, I repent. <laughs> I will confess so much that you'll be so shocked that you will listen to whatever I say afterwards because you're on the edge of your seats. And literally, I have done that to my husband. And I, oh, I, you know, I need to address this with you, babe. And this is, da, da, da. And, um, and actually, I realized, because thank you, God, I have the gift of the counselor of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I right. also have a counselor too, who is used by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And I have people who give me feedback. And then I realize this was a need, a desire in me that is actually godly. I'm not actually afraid of of our generation within the church and outside of the church's desire for heroes or or those that we look up to and and be overinflated or obsession with leadership. Because actually, vast majority of the time, if not all of them, it is a God-given whole or desire that has been placed in us because we were created for God. You were created for a king. You have a desire in you, no matter how affected you are, to be led and to be led well. You have in us, we have a desire for peace. And safety, that's called government. The government of God, Isaiah says, is is rests on Jesus' shoulders. He's the prince of peace. In us, we have a desire for now, which is such a vogue thing, which is godly too, is vulnerability and transparency. I, I want to be unconditionally loved and accepted for who I am and let people see my weakness and my shortcomings. Genesis, the Garden of Eden, it was our original creation moment naked, if you will, and unafraid. There's a show called Naked and Afraid. Don't watch it. Um, I have not watched it. I haven't. I promise. Um, I'm being serious. I know other people. Yeah, no, I'm just joking. Okay. Um, and I want, and, and, but there is that, that, that is actually a God desire because we were created for God. You have a desire in you to have a hero or to have heroes. You have a desire and I have a desire because I'm a recovering perfectionist for perfection. But that is a desire for God. 
And where that gets me in trouble, gets our generation in trouble, is we attribute what should be directed and is a God-given desire for God to create intimacy and connection and trust and freedom and adventure, I end up with the age old cry. The Israelites have been liberated. They've been set free. They've watched the miracles of God as they've walked out of Pharaoh's clutches and, 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 and they are free. And 1 Samuel 8, you'll know this so well, God's people come to Samuel and they, they implore him for, for judges and for king and for a king. They implore him. And Samuel, who's representing the, the heart of God, is so deeply grieved because the heart of God is grieved because he is their one true judge. And he's very good at his job. And he is their one true king. And he is so good at being king. He's perfect. That is who he is. It's not even what he does. It is literally who he is. And they have access. And they have authority. And they have provision. And they have connection. They have his presence. But yet... They forsake everything they have access to. And they choose to have a human mediator, a human version, which is flawed and has shortcomings, limitations. In fact, many commentators will say this is a manifestation of idolatry. The one true judge and king, they want it in human form. They wanted an image of God. And this cry in our hearts and and this uh, leaning, if you will, hasn't changed. It is still in humanity. This is what we do today. This heroism and and celebrity culture and and, uh, a, a tainted version of honor. And what ends up happening is it steals from, for two things from us as the body of Christ, which we need now more than ever. It robs us of true intimacy with God. Because instead of going to God, we're going to man. And of course, and I said this in the earlier service, and please forgive me for being so extreme, but I, I promise you, I'll tell you my beliefs and all these things. Um, Uh, I'm not an anarchist and I am not perpetuating socialism to you. We need leadership. There is the gift of the the office of the church. We need leadership that is in human form. It is given to us by God. Throughout the book of Acts, every church that was planted had leadership. It was diverse in its expression or unique makeup, but had very clear leadership. We see 1 Corinthians, order and worship and all the things, okay? Okay. But we lose out on intimacy with the Lord when instead of desiring and it driving us to God, it drives us to man. And because we are driven to man and we feel let down or there's a shortcoming or we hold it to uh, accountability, we've lost the ability to hold honor in one hand and people's humanity in the other. And this is the power of Jesus. Actually, their expression of desiring God in the Old Testament was give us a judge, give us a king. But actually when the apostles and and the disciples preach the gospel in the book of Acts, when they recount those stories and they share that the the fulfillment of God coming to to, uh, fulfill every promise and redeem everything that He said He would is found in Jesus. You'd agree Jesus is the perfect representation of the Father. Praise God. I'll see you in heaven. No, I'm, just... I'm teasing. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I, the grace of God is in that truth. Because here's the thing. We think we need a judge and a king. And Jesus says he, or, or the expression of Jesus as they retold the history was that God gave us a savior and a king. Now, let me make this clear. His saving does not eradicate his uh, authority and his, um, the truth of his judgment. 
He is righteous as He is full of grace. Yes. We know this. Yes. He is holy and perfect as He is abounding in love yes. and mercy. Yes. This is true. But I often see in my own life when I've lost sight of the gospel, I represent to myself, to my family, and to the, those that I lead that God is primarily a judge. That's how I know I've forgotten the gospel. I haven't been spending time in the Word of God. And when I'm aware and I'm preaching the gospel, because how many of you know that the mission of God that He's given you and the gifts that God has given you isn't just so that you can save the world and change the world. It is to primarily reveal Jesus, both to you and to the people around you, but definitely to you first, because our first call of leadership is to ourselves, it's to lead me. Um, okay, no more sassiness. Okay, now, because that is true, we see Peter in the book of Acts. God took him into a trance as he prayed above where he lived. And he spent time with the Lord in prayer. Book of Acts says, took him into a trance three times to change Peter's theology, to, to bring down a sheet, four corners, diverse food, unclean. It had nothing to do with food. We know that. It had to do with God correcting his theology that this is not just, there is the unchosen and the chosen. There is now unclean and clean. It is God's heart and through Jesus, all. He desires all to come into the kingdom of God. And so what he does for one, he wants to do for all. The picture of Israel, what he did for Israel is a sign of his heart and his treatment of all. Favor is now your friend. Um, a testimony, whatever God does, does he bring breakthrough for one that actually isn't their piece of the pie. It is a billboard and a signpost of what God is able to do for you. That's why we can never have competition and comparison in the church. It actually should not be able to coexist because one person's breakthrough, another's testimony, someone else being used powerfully by God or, or experiencing healing in their marriage is not them having a trademark on that. You are not the hero of your story. And when we exalt heroism and exalt leadership above God's view of leadership and the biblical view of leadership, what ends up happening is we make people the hero of their story. My friend, Dr. Adams, she's amazing. She says, and she is maybe more sassy than me. She says, Jesus is the hero of your story. And that you are not even, you are not the main character. I'm not the main character. We are probably not even the supporting in supporting roles. And this is not a heavy. This is a gift to you and I. Because you need to know when you received a prophetic word, you are not the hero of that prophetic word. God is. It is not a measuring stick where God wonders, let me see if you can measure up to that. That is a promise from the Father who whatever He commands, He gives you a promise and provision to make it happen. Whatever He judges, He has the ability to forgive and restore double and more than that, thank you, Jesus, and allow you and I to lead and to release breakthrough and anointing in that area. If I could pull back the curtain, and this may just be me, but I think it might be a few other people. The majority of people who are preaching and ministering or have breakthrough in a certain area is usually a place that was once a weakness. And they found the Lord in it. And they got a theology around that. And they saw the reality of Jesus and miracles in it. And they became so convinced in it because God says, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. He's not saying go sin and be weak and abdicate your authority because then God's gonna be perfect because you can't stand up straight or whatever it is. God lets us know that He is the hero of our story. As you look at the Old Testament, 
I remember my friend walking me through this and it changed my life. We look at the life of David and we see David and, and how many of you have said, oh gosh, if I could worship like David or if I could live a life like David, if it could be said of me that I was a man after God's own heart or Maybe in the New Testament, you look at Apostle Paul and there's a deep desire in you because you're a man or woman who's given yourself to revival. And you are, have a deep desire to have lived in the days of the book of Acts and to see and to have the boldness or the strength of Apostle Paul or the purity that he carried. Yeah. You've missed the point of the Bible. The Lord in love and empowerment is bringing to our generation the true plumb line. I love leadership. I love Jesus' leadership. I love being led by Jesus. I love the authority that Jesus has in my life. I love being submitted to Jesus. What did Jesus say to the centurion? Those who are, or the centurion say to Jesus. Those who have, no, those who are under authority, who can finish that? have authority, yeah. Those who are under authority have authority. The enemy has attacked a picture of a father, the image of a father. This is God's choice to reveal himself as such. The enemy has attacked the, the beauty and the, the need and the strength of families. Yep. The government of God manifests as family. Yes. Yep. And now... I wanna highlight to you what I feel the Lord doing in me and I invite you to come on that journey on. of allowing the Lord to restore to us again the gift of leadership. The enemy would love for you and I to give in to the spirit of the day that makes a mockery of leadership that would uh, convince us that we don't need leadership. And Yes, it affects humans, but more, it manifests in our connection with God. We have been lured into this belief that the more independent or strong I am, or the more I can cope on my own, the more godly or the, the, the more capable I am as a Christian. The, the Bible says, that the Bible shows me rather that the highest level of leadership is absolute dependence on God. Yes. It's why God turned the tables through the life of Jesus and said that the kingdom of God belongs to these, talking about children. Yeah. The highest level of leadership is absolute dependence on God. And the minute I allow myself to think that David is the hero of the story, that Paul is the hero of that story, whoever it is, the heroes of today or in revival history, that they are the ultimate heroes of the story. That is the minute I take out the gospel and the plan of God and the ways of God and, and the nature of God from that moment in history. Because David was never the hero of his story. God was the hero of David's story. It is a miracle that David, after all the debauchery and, and sin and Humanity and honour and all the devotion and worship and, and being set apart. God looks at his life and says, this is a man after my own heart. That is an invitation. That is an expression of the redemption. That is God pointing to what is possible, not with David, with him. We look at the life of Paul and, we, and, and, and I've been lured. I even bought the N.T. Wright biography on Paul's life. And I'm gonna be honest with you, more confession sessions. I'm so relevant. And, um, and I, as I read that, I, you know what I was doing? I was looking for Paul's personality and I was wanting to break down his gospel messages and I'm a learner and all that stuff is magnificent. But let me tell you what was behind that. I want to live a life of bold faith like Paul. Let me find out who Paul was and how he did it to live that out. Absolutely theologically incorrect. I mean, it is absolutely, Paul is not the hero of that story. Saul to Paul and Paul's life is a miracle and the grace and redemption and resurrection power of Jesus, the enabling grace of Jesus. 
and we see it manifest. I do this. I could jump on YouTube and I love this leader or I feel like they live an effective way, live out an effective life. I wanna know what their morning routine is and what supplements are they taking. <laughs> and you know, and some of that is good and effective, but here's the heart behind it. The minute we start exalting man and calling it honor and placing that person in a capital H hero position is the minute you disqualify yourself is the minute you forget who God has always intended to be for you. It is the minute you forget the death, the resurrection and the ascension and the authority of Jesus. Because if you feel like as a Christian, the more you become like your hero, the more you'll become like Christ, you've picked up a mediator. You've brought in another saviour, you've pulled in a judge or you've asked for a human king. Jesus is the hero of your story. Jesus is the hero of my finances. Jesus is the hero of my family and my marriage. Jesus is the hero of my destiny and my prophetic words and my breakthrough and my position. And if He isn't, run far away very quickly. (laughs) Because the minute comparison or competition starts to come in, is the minute we've given into the spirit of the day, I want to take God and make Him in human form. And I pick up a judgmental spirit. And then I wanna analyze, who are you? Who are you with? How do you work? And we've forgotten that God will, that He is redeeming the earth. The earth is not gonna disappear. He is redeeming and restoring the earth. Thank you, Rich Smith, for changing my life. And (laughs) Jesus was resurrected in bodily form. Not even our bodies are gonna go away. We're gonna be resurrected and our bodies are gonna stay, but they're gonna be in perfect condition. Thanks God. This is the radical nature of following Jesus. You have a Lord and a King. And it's not a curse. It is the window or the door. It is the key. It is not just a moment of salvation where we build a well around it like John 4. It is a John 7. There's rivers of living water. It is gushing. It's never running dry. And in a way, God is inviting you and I to break, yes, shame and to feel the qualification of the Lord, but it might not be the way you and I might expect. It might be that we stop praying for more of God. Because Acts 2, Joel 2, we already know, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And maybe our prayer turns to God, I submit more of myself to you. Maybe a revival is on the other end of, maybe the Bible's right. If we repent and humble ourselves, He'll heal our land. (laughs) That actually on the other side of our, our weapon, It is my weapon, it is my privilege, it is my authority that I am under authority. And the world wants to to make a mockery of human forms of leadership. And the world wants to convince us that, that we should be cautious and stay away. And I gave you all my qualifications to that statement. And we can go either extreme, but both is the same route. It is the enemy attacking the gift of the leadership of Jesus. You and I need less lessons and courses and flying around and all of that for leadership training. And in this season, have you heard people share words on the oil of the Lord, on prayer more than ever before, intimacy with God? The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering. This is not an invitation to let go of corporate gatherings and now to get more of God, we need to go away. It's the both and. Yeah, that's right. that's good. This is the invitation of Jesus. Would you return to my leadership? Would you come under my authority? And those who are under authority have authority. We need more classes, more moments where we pray for grace to follow Jesus, not to lead. (laughs) Because when you follow Jesus, 
You lead better than any course, any teaching, any hack, any whatever conference can teach you, anyone's eating plan or morning routine, even though I follow those too. This is our invitation, that Jesus' model of ministry, this is the best hack you'll ever have. He would only say whatever He heard the Father saying. And He would only do whatever He heard the Father, whatever He saw the Father doing. Even Jesus was the one who has all authority, was under authority. For the church, we can call it, you know, different names and have these prophetic senses that we see in part. But in my seeing in part and in my moments with the Lord, I feel the Lord in this season restoring the beauty and the gift of being under authority, of having the perfect leadership of Jesus, of knowing that I of letting go of this obsession of being amazing, of, of, of having influence and impact. Because if I spend my days watching what the Father is doing, being with Him, and I spend my days hearing what the Father is saying in His Word and, and indeed as He moves on the earth, what ends up happening is I do and I say whatever He says. And God, we know Jesus, the perfect representation of the Father. God is perfect leadership. And as we follow Him, everything else, Jesus' prayer He taught us is right. Our Father, who can finish it? You can pause there. Our Father. Radical. Our Father. Your life affects other people. Your life can be affected by other people. And God is not afraid of that. He can heal, He can redeem, He can restore, but He is perfect leadership. Humans are not. But may we be holy as He is holy. And so this is our invitation, that we live out and participate, not in Libby's kingdom or Libby Gordon Ministries International, but if that's your name and that's your, not your heart, that's beautiful. And I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Um, I, want, I, I, I want us to hear this. We are part of Jesus's kingdom. And, and as you receive prophetic words, there's an invitation not to weigh them up based on your Enneagram number. There's an invitation as God speaks to your destiny, not to look back on what your parents did or how you were raised. God says to Isaiah, look to the rock from which you were cut. It's shaped my whole life. And look to the quarry from which you were hewn. He's talking about heaven. He's talking about the cloud of witnesses. He's saying, you now come from me, Moses. You now come from me, Miriam. And we know with Christ, all things are possible. How does that work? Because you are not the hearer. And you were never meant to be the hero. And Jesus is the hero of our story. And when we have that deeply rooted in us, every breakthrough, every moment of God, everything that God does on the earth, we know what He wants to do for one, He wants to do for all. And when we make peace with the gift of Jesus' perfect leadership, we know I am never, ever afraid of His judgment. I invite it. We not, David says, search me and know me. He invites God to do that. I haven't heard him say he does that. Um, and so we, we invite, I love repentance. I know it's controversial, but I do because I read the Bible and I see the effect in my life when I follow him. I love, actually, I don't maybe love it at the time. Yes, I told you I'm human. The things of rearranging my kid's closet. And I, but I love actually dying to myself. Why? Because I get to live a life when I do that, that was never possible. We're Libby in charge. And we need to stop weighing and waiting up, uh, weighing up. If someone calls you out in the crowd and says, you are called to be an evangelist. 
and you're looking at your own life and you're saying, well, I'm not super charismatic and loud and I'm not the boldest person in the room. So, oh, I don't know, I think they might've missed it. This is not your kingdom. This is not my kingdom. This is not the kingdom of my personality type or all those things are beneficial, but they cannot be the plumb line or the deciding factor. Jesus is. And so when we ask Jesus, is this who you say I am? Like He could call Peter the denier and the one who doubts and, and God has to reveal over and over again. He can say, you on this rock, I will build my church. Why? Because Jesus is the hero of his story. Why don't you stand? The beauty, the beauty, just close your eyes if you're able to. The beauty of every gospel message we see in the book of Acts gives us the gift as they describe Jesus. The people asked for a judge and king and Jesus came as Saviour and King. He is Saviour of the very thing He will judge and He has. And so this is the gift of Christ's leadership. He sees exactly what's going on. He knows the heart. He sees every detail. But because of the finished work of the cross that changes you and I into, we are new creations. It means that, th- that what was impossible for man is possible for God. Yes. What wasn't is now because yes. of God, because of the death of Jesus. And in Isaiah, I'll just read this one verse over you as we close. After God's people have come out of exile and they are, because they are consequences for our actions, and God deals with them. He treats them in the most remarkable way. Not because He's weak with sin or, or He is uh, gushy, mushy and not to be taken seriously. But in the economy of God, His forgiveness and His grace and His comfort and His love is His flex. It is His strength. Because as He judges, so He provides and promises and redeems and restores. This is the gift of the leadership of God. Every moment in um, doing a preacher moment and talking to you as we pray, I'll end with this. As we look at the commands of God, because let me be clear, Jesus commanded us to do stuff. Stuff, many things. It's not a choice, it's a command. We in service of God. There is not one, this is the perfect illustration. There's not one command in the book of Acts that they recount or remember of Jesus where a promise of God is not prior to it or preceding it. Because whatever He commands, He saturates in His provision and His promise. Even His commands are fulfilled by Him, through Him in us. Jesus, we ask for a move of Your Spirit. We ask for a move of Your Spirit like never before, that You would call us to live in the authority and the leadership and the kingship of Jesus. That we would, as a church, pray less, more God, and and be praying, God, more of my mind submitted to You. More of my body submitted and under Your Lordship. More of my spirit, more of our meetings, more of my business, more of my children, my finances, and my family. God, we thank You. We thank You that we were never, ever meant to be the hero of the story. You, Jesus, are the hero of our story. And in the name of Jesus, we release heavenly permission slips from the Father that what is possible for one is possible for all because of the death, the resurrection, the ascension and the power of the Spirit of God in you and I in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Wasn't that amazing? Hello, hello. Wasn't that amazing? So honest and so real. Thank you, Libby. Thank her again one more time. That was amazing. 
And I know that we're all going to walk out of here with that question in our minds, is God the hero of my story? And we should be asking every day, is God the hero of my story today? But there may be some folks here that you've never taken that first step. And that first step is that place where you're actually inviting Jesus into your heart and you're recognizing, I- I've messed up, I've made mistakes. Jesus, I've never asked you to be the hero of this story. And if there's somebody here today and you're saying, you know what, I need to take the first step. I need to admit that, that, I, that I've messed up, I've made mistakes. And I want to invite Jesus, the perfect one, the holy one, the pure one, to come into my life for the first time. If that's you, why don't you just raise your hand? Right here in this place, say, I need to make Jiro the the hero of my story for the very first time. Is there anybody here? One more second. Is there anybody here that would want to raise their hand and say that? Well, bless the Lord. We have a banner over here. If you were, were unsure if you wanted to raise your hand or not, we have folks over here who would be happy to pray with you. Let me invite the ministry team to come forward. If you give them a second before you guys head out. Ministry team, come on up here to the front. Ministry team, quickly, come to the front. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you raised your hand during the communion time when Ben was leading, would you please also come over here to the banner because we have folks over here that would love to pray with you. And so anybody, if you have any needs, uh, physical needs, uh, prayer needs, the ministry team up here would be happy to pray f- for you today. Thank you so much. Bless you guys. Have a great afternoon. Man, that was incredible. That was amazing. So good. Wow. Guys, I just want to say right now, if you guys raise your hand to receive Jesus or to just resurrender to his lordship, I just want to pray for you right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your grace right now to flood homes and cars and workplaces as people are watching, to surrender fully to the lordship of Jesus, to surrender fully to the leadership of Jesus. God, I thank you for your spirit that is washing over people right now and that your blood that is restoring and redeeming all things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, I just thank you so much for what you're doing and the people online. I thank you for that word from Libby. I just want to encourage you guys. um, What Libby just spoke on, I I really want us to lean into that one question. Um, Who is the hero of our story? As well as... Um, are, have we actually submitted our, our lives to Jesus' leadership and to continue that process of yielding our mind, our will, our emotions, our bodies, our spirits, that we'd be yielded vessels, fully surrendered to do whatever he asks. So good. Yes. That's so good. Yes. And if you gave your life to the Lord for the very first time or resurrendered your life and said, Jesus, I want you to be the hero of my story, we want you to go to Bethel.com slash start here and join our online on. discipleship Zoom lessons and, and be a part of a community of people who has also said yes to Jesus. Come on. It's so good. It's so good. I see some people there asking for prayer. Man, we just release yes. um, just that God would, would fulfill all your needs. Yes. He yes. doesn't always give us all of our wants. Please remember that. But he gives us all, all of, of our needs. Let's Anyways, see. you guys are amazing. You guys are Hope you guys were blessed. I know Jesus I was. is the hero of your story. He is the hero. He's the hero of your healing, of your finances, and Come of on. your family. And so just remember, today is a perfect yeah. opportunity for you to realign and Come say, on. Jesus, would you be the hero of my story? And just like Libby says, it gives us access to intimacy with God. Come on. So today, just take some time and even just repent and just say, Jesus, I repent for making someone else Come the on. hero of my story. You are the hero of my story. Yeah, and we just pray, Cheryl Cooper, we've, we have seen in the last three weeks um, a radical amount of people getting wow. healed of either eye stuff or ear stuff at our Young Saints conference. We had a kid with glasses with a cross eye. His eyes straightened out. All of his vision came back. He didn't need glasses anymore. And we just release healing over your eyes right now, Cheryl. Healing over yes, your right eyes now. in Jesus' Jesus. name that all the pain would lift, that anything that's going on in your eyes would be completely healed. And uh, Rosanna, we just release the yes. joy of the Lord to break the spirit of depression over you, over your family. We just release it right now that it would break over your family as well, that there would be such a a root of joy that would spring up inside of you. Amen. 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 Until next time. We love you, Bethel Love you guys family. so much. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great week.